Hi class, welcome to Advantage. My name is Dr. Scott Adamson, and today we're going to investigate the efficiency of birds in flight. Have you ever thought, do birds know calculus? Well, we're gonna to look today at a model that was established back in 1969 to see how birds maintain flight and how much power is required to do that. And because they're birds, they might wanna minimize that power to maintain flight. Let's explore the situation and see how it works. Do birds know calculus? In an article or in a paper published in 1969 by C.J. Pennykewick, he did a study and has some experimental evidence to show that the power required by a bird to maintain flight is given by this formula right here. Now don't be too scared about all the letters in this formula. What we have here is P is this power required for a bird to maintain flight depends on the variable, the variable V. And V is the relative speed of the bird. Now those are the only two quantities that we're going to allow to vary in this function. All the other variables you see here are constants. For instance, W is the weight of the bird. R is on the board you'll see later, R is the Greek letter rho, which is uh, representing the density of the air while the bird is flying. There's V again, the velocity that we're talking about. S is a constant, that a positive constant associated with the bird's size and shape. So for different kinds of birds, Penny Kewick would have used different values to represent the bird's particular size and, and um, and characteristic size and shape and then also a a is another positive constant that is used to describe a particular bird's size and shape so those are all the variables that we have going on and what we're interested in is under what conditions under what velocity would a bird have to fly in order to minimize the power required to maintain flight for these different constants so right now, we just I've just randomly stopped all those constants. W, the weight of the bird, R, the density of the air, S and A are those special constants for the size and shape of the bird. We've just stopped those at a random place, and we can see that there is indeed a minimum value. At a speed of 1.284 units, the power required to maintain flight is minimized at 2.717. Nice. Now we see that as, as these constants change, we always will see a minimum value, an optimal or most efficient method for this bird to maintain flight. And as I click on that, we see that there's always a relationship here. There's always a relative speed, and then there's always a corresponding power to maintain flight no matter what values we give these constants. So the question at hand then is, what is the relationship? How do these numbers where do these numbers come from? Now we can, we can see these things, just see that minimum stay on that graph, no matter how I slide these different parameters, there always will be a minimum power, there will always be a certain velocity associated with that minimum power, but what is it? That's why we need calculus. So we will go to the board and we'll find out what is the relationship between relative speed and power to maintain flight in this situation. So we've seen on Desmos that there is indeed a minimum value. There's a, there's a place on this graph for some input quantity V, the velocity of the bird, and some output quantity P, the power required to maintain flight, such that that power is minimized. It's optimized as a minimum value. We just want to see what is that relationship between all those variables and that power and that velocity. So the, the theory is this, when a graph, when a function reaches a minimum that we saw on Desmos, the derivative at that spot is indeed zero. It's the only place where the derivative is zero. The derivative is negative on this side, the derivative is positive on this side, but there is that one minimum value where the derivative is zero. So what we're gonna do is work to find out under what conditions does this formula produce a derivative that is zero which means we have to take the derivative. So let's work on that. So the power needed to maintain flight is a function of V. 
And that function is all this stuff. Now, don't get scared by all the letters again. Remember that W is a constant, the weight of the bird. Remember rho, I've used R on Desmos, because it doesn't like Greek letters. So rho is the density of the air. S is a positive constant associated with the size and shape of the bird. There's our only variable, our independent variable V. There's rho again, the density of the air. There's another constant associated with the size and shape of any particular bird. And then there again is our one variable V. So to take the derivative of this, I'm gonna do a little bit of algebra first. And the algebra is this. First, we're gonna say W squared over two rho s. Because remember, all of that is just constant. Now, algebraically, that division of v can be expressed as v to the negative one power. And the reason I'm doing that is because taking the derivative will just be easier if I write it as v to the negative one power. Now, this other term is fine. We have one half rho a v cubed. So, so far, no derivatives, just a rewriting, but now let's take the derivative. So the derivative of P with respect to V by the power rule. The negative one will come out front, so a negative W squared over two rho S. Decrease that power by one by the power rule, brings us to negative two. Bring three out front. Three times one half is three halves rho a v, decrease the power by one squared. So we're really just taking a, a relatively simple derivative in terms of the power rule. What gets complicated is just keeping track of all of those constants. Now the interesting thing here is, under what conditions is this derivative? Negative w squared over two rho s v to the negative two plus three halves rho a v squared. Under what conditions is this derivative zero? Because when the derivative is zero, we know we're at a, an optimum, either a minimum or a maximum. In this case, it'll be a minimum. Let's find out where that happens. And when I say, what, let's find out where that happens, what is the value of v such that that minimum will occur? So we do some algebra and we find out. Where is the derivative equal to zero? So let's work on that. First of all, let's do this. Now that we have this v to the negative two, I'm gonna rewrite it with positive exponents again. So we have negative w squared over two rho s v squared. And we have three rho a v squared. And rather than having three halves, I'm just gonna say all over two. So algebraically speaking, this v to the negative two becoming a denominator v squared, or this three halves becoming three halves like this, math, uh, algebraically we have an equivalent expression. My next move is gonna be, since this first term is negative, let's add that term to the other side. So we'll have three rho a v squared over two equals, add this term to the other side, w squared over two rho s v squared. And now just keep in mind, what we're doing is we're gonna solve for v. That's the goal of this project. So to continue to solve for v, what we have are really just two ratios that are equal to each other. And so there's a little theory here that might be useful to think about. When we talk about equivalent fractions, like one half we know is equal to two fourths, there's a property of equivalent fractions that their cross products are equal. One times four is four, two times two is four. Cross products of equivalent fractions are equal. And so that's gonna be useful to us here because we have two ratios that are equal and so their cross products are gonna be equal. So let's find that cross product. Let's take, let's start with the bottom two, the denominator of two to the numerator of w squared. So two times w squared has to be equal to this product. Now let's work on this product. We have a three times two, which is six. We have a rho times rho, which is rho squared. We have an a, that's all. We have an s, that's all. So we have an a times s. And then we have v squared times v squared, which is v to the fourth power. Now again, don't be scared by all these letters, it's just constants. 
weight of the bird, constant, density of the air, constant, A and S, two constants that are associated with the size and shape of the bird that, they're, that we're studying. And so those are all those constants. We are still just solving for V. So to solve for V, we can just divide by all those constants. So V to the fourth will equal, divide all those constants over to the left side. 2W squared divided by 6 rho squared AS. We're getting close. Let's just do a little simplifying here because 2 sixths can be simplified to 1 third. So let's simplify this and say W squared over 3 rho squared AS is equal to V to the fourth power. One last one. To solve for V, since it's raised to the fourth power, we'll take the fourth root of both sides. So the fourth root of V to the fourth is V, and the fourth root of all of this, the fourth root of the weight of the bird squared divided by three times the density of the air squared times that constant times that constant, the size and the shape of the bird we're studying. This is a formula that will give for whatever W row A S that we have for a particular bird, plug them all in, we will know if the bird flies at that velocity, that relative speed, it will minimize the power needed to maintain flight. Let's go back to Desmos and kind of put this all back together and, and see if you can see the connections between the graph and this formula. So we saw with our work on the board that the velocity needed to minimize the power to maintain flight was a kind of a crazy formula, the fourth root of a whole bunch of things. I want to show it to you here on Desmos though. The formula that we were describing is right here. And what I want you to see here now that we know this, that the fourth root of W squared over three rho squared SA is the velocity, the formula for the velocity that will minimize this power function. I want you to see that we can visualize it on the graph. So no matter where we drag our constants, for any weight of the bird, for any density of air, for any constant S and for any constant A, notice that the velocity, like here's a spot, a velocity of 1.218 units is exactly the output of that formula that we found on the board. Or if we go to another weight, another density of air, another value for S, another value for A, a 0 0.62 velocity is exactly, to the nearest hundredth anyway, the velocity needed to maintain flight, to minimize the power to maintain flight. And so the power, the, the usefulness of the work that we do on the board is so we can now come over here to Desmos and see that relationship by creating this formula here or typing in this formula here and seeing that that velocity required to minimize the power to maintain flight is that exact formula.